Hello, welcome to my channel Doll Talks from a Short Lady. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the differences between a bio data, a resume, and a curriculum vitae. Now, most of the time, we treat them as synonyms of each other and we use them interchangeably. But there is a marked difference in all these three. So, first, let me start with the bio data. Now, the bio data is biographical information. It is rarely customized from application to application, by which I mean that once you prepare your bio data, the information in it does not change with time, except maybe the update in your age. Next, it is used for various purposes, one of them being application for an unskilled job. Now, schools, universities, banks, hospitals, etc., all tend to maintain a bio data of the members. And as I said, it is also used in lower category of employment where only basic working skill sets are needed. For example, if you're applying for a job of a security guard at an ATM, in that case, a bio data should be sufficient for you to get an interview call. Next, it may include your passport size photograph, a form of identification, maybe in this case your other card. It can talk about your age, date of birth, your blood group. Even at times, it can talk about things you're allergic to, and it definitely contains information about your family something like the name of your father, the name of your mother, and the number of members in your family. Moving on to the next one in the list, which is the resume. Now, the meaning of a resume is a short summary. It's a brief account of one's professional experience and qualifications mostly. It can contain other information, but these two are the main areas of focus. A resume is always submitted with a cover letter where a company wants it, even though they might not mention it explicitly. It is almost always used for a job application. Unlike a bio data, which can be used for multiple purposes, a resume is geared only towards application of a job and it is mostly used for an entry-level job. When you're a fresher, you don't have a lot of experience in your background, you don't have a lot of research that you have done or projects that you've taken, so in that case you will be using a resume. In fact, for your first job you'll be using a resume and for the remaining two or three years until you have bagged a lot of experience, you will be using a resume. It is always customized from application to application, by which I mean that if you are applying for the job of a web designer, then you would want to draw the attention of the panel to the front end and back end technologies. But if you are applying for a company like Morgan Stanley, in that case, you would like to focus more on your Java skills and your algorithms. Also, you need to work on the objective and you need to customize every time you send your resume to a different company. This video session is mostly geared towards my students who are freshers and they're trying for their first entry level job. So right now, all you need is going to be a resume. Make sure that your resume is only one page. First comes to worst, you can spill over to the second page. But my advice is to try and keep it to one page as companies do not have a lot of time to read through lengthy resumes. Moreover, thousands of students will be applying for the same job in the same company. Hence, try and keep it short. Try and make your resume on a ready-made template. Gone are the days when we used to type our resumes in a Word document. 
Now, when you're writing in a Word document, the end product might not look very professional. Also, it is a little boring as mostly Word documents, we tend to stick to black and white. There are a lot of software that have come up that allow you to customize templates, make your own. They also have a set of ready-made templates. You can try using Canva. I have used it personally, and I find Canva easy to use and very attractive. Do not make your resume very cluttered by trying to put in a lot of information onto one page. Also, the template that you choose should be aesthetically pleasing to the eyes and should be catchy. So, in a thousand resumes, your resume should stand out and that is possible if you pay attention to some of the formatting details, the color choice and things like that. Try and prepare your resume in a chronological order and the chronological order should also be in the reverse form. That means you talk about the things that you've done last and try not leaving any suspicious gaps in the work history because this draws the attention of the panel uh, towards the gap and they might ask you a lot of questions about it. At times, you might not help having a gap in your history in case you're sick and you had to drop off from studies for a year or two. Do not put information like your age, date of birth, your sex, marital status and health information in a resume. They in fact have no place in a resume and it is a waste of your time putting these kind of information because none of these really have any significance with the job that you're applying for. If you are worried about your date of birth, the 10 standard passing year is sufficient to let people know your approximate age. Do not include your salary expectations. I have seen a lot of resume where they write somewhere at the bottom expected salary something something something. Now this isn't very poor taste. It is almost like you're begging for a salary. You should be aware of how much you're worth in today's times and you can find out this information by talking to your seniors and getting to know each company how much they have been offering in terms of CTC to different colleges. Mind it, the CTC might be different for people getting recruited from IITs and NITs and it also might differ from college to college when we're talking about private colleges. Also, do not sign your resume at the bottom and make any legal declaration. A resume is definitely not a legal document and there is no requirement for it. This is all I have for you in this video. For more videos on this topic where I talk about the different components of a resume, please refer to the description box below. The name of my channel again is Still Talks from a Short Lady. And with that, I will say thank you and bye.